Welcome back to our guide to virtual practicals for academic purposes. In this video, we will build on the previous learning objectives and see now how we can transform our lab practical into an online tool. We'll go over how we started the development of the materials and how we structured all that content into a clear overview that guides students to learn more about cell cultures and more about the sections. So the first thing is to structure uh, what uh, you think the virtual practice will become. I mean, it's like the order, the modules you think you might need. And at the same time, because I think that you need to think um, in, at the same time in parallel, is how I'm going to represent that visually. Because you might be thinking about a workflow by text, which is different if you're going to use images. And sometimes you think you are going to have the right image and then it's impossible to, to get this image from the rodent once it's open. Okay. So what we did is to think about the structure. And at the same time, we have some technicians that we were asking to take some pictures of the different uh, organs or cavities in the order we wanted uh, to get the pictures. So, uh, and you have to do exactly is, is to see if they match. And sometimes you have to change the image and to do another image. And sometimes you only have um, to change the text to fit the image that you already have because it's a good one, perhaps for another purpose. So you really have to, to be thinking about the structure of the text, the order, and also the images that fits because sometimes you think you have the good one, but sometimes it's not. Yes, we indeed stumbled on that. We sat down and then we went over the, the protocol. So like Ariane says, cut it down in, in modules because in cell culture, for instance, it's not just culturing the cells. You also have the part where you need to defrost them, put them in culture, but also the part where you might actually have to freeze some of your stock again. So we thought, we thought about the whole aspect of what's involved in, in cell culture and then made different modules out of that. And uh, then we also had the module on exploring the lab first. So that's the four modules we ended up with. But then with each model, we also had to think about, okay, step by step, how do you approach it? For instance, even starting with pictures where they had to say, okay, how do I uh, start by cleaning and making the environment sterile? How do I start by switching on the hood? which are the right buttons to push, uh, how do I have to put the window frame, like even these kind of things that you naturally do when you enter a cell culture lab and, and you would prepare yourself to start. Um, so yeah, we went with a, a kind of a decision tree type of on paper format, <laughs> like, okay, how are we going to design this? And then uh, indeed the right materials. So taking, Maybe it sounds silly, but taking pictures of even a spray bottle for the ethanol that you even ask them, okay, what's the right way to do it? Or um, we even went as far as uh, creating infections. So <laughs> that's the worst thing you can have in your cell culture. But in order to have real life pictures of different types of infections you can have, we actually mimic that to actually be able to capture uh, that. And, and there were some challenging items there, uh, but I think we ended up with some good uh, video material as well as uh, pictures to illustrate it uh, at one point. And then you have, of course, on top of that, that you have different types of cell cultures. So why did we decide for have G2s and um, the a 549s is because they're one of the most commonly used uh, cell types. Also, there's information on the web. So for some background information, we refer to online sources. And then on the other side, we decided also to give the information on the cells that grow in suspension. And also there we went for two very commonly used ones, which are the THP1 cells and the TK6 cells. Um, but of course, it can be applied to other cell cultures as well. The main reason behind this uh, modular structure, it was that 
um, we have a lot of content. I mean, you can do explain the materials, you can uh, show the room dissection, you can, but also the materials will depend on the experimental design you are going to use. Then you have the sacrifice, then you have the dissection, but also we have all the sample processing depending on the experimental design. So for this project, we wanted to cover the dissection for sure and the eustanasia as well. But we think that we can increase this uh, virtual practice in the future with extra modules. So I think if we have it, uh, we can create more content. And to by having these modules, we can play for to increase this practical, but also to show some students one of the modules without the others, because you might not need everything depending on the students or, or the subject you are teaching. So this is why uh, we use modules. I mean, to for us similar. So indeed, we we changed it based on the structure and and to make sure that every aspect of the cell culture process uh, was explained. But also once they wanted to go back and for instance, they, they practice one part, but then in another part, they thought, okay, this is still not clear to me. They could come back. So it's not that they had to go from module one to module four. I mean, in the, the guide to the tutors uh, we, we or to the teachers, we do say like the first time advise your students to go from module one to module four, but afterwards they can just start module two or three and they can practice on a specific aspect. Um, or if they want to find and start doing uh, toying of cells at one point, they can just go directly there or the freezing. So it gives them a bit of freedom to practice with the, with the modules that are less known to them as well. <laughs> <laughs>